VW Motors, the Lycan Hypersport. This is the last chapter of a unique story of a brand new supercar, which most thought would never come true. The story of a new hyper-luxury brand in the automotive industry, which now many think is here to stay. Only six years back, the W Motors Lycan Hypersport was a dream in a young designer's head, merely sketches on paper. Now, after six years of hard work, the Lycan has gone in production and more. It is the star of the newest Fast and Furious movie, the ultimate Hollywood franchise for car enthusiasts. This is episode four of W Motors, the making of a supercar. Our film crews followed the W Motors team and its creator, Ralph DeBoss, for years, capturing this amazing story between joy and pain, nail-biting stress and big moments of triumph. In this final episode, the three most important questions will be answered. Number one, does this supercar work? Can its drivetrain and design handle the 770 horsepower? Second, after his non-stop roadshow of almost two years, will Ralph DeVos finally sell one of his multi-million dollar Lycans? And question number three, what will the future bring for W Motors? A normal day in the spring of 2015 in Dubai, one of the most dynamic cities of our times, and the only city at this point where people can witness this. The W Motors Lycan Hypersport, picking up speed on the highway, cruising along the skyline, filing into bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, just like any other car. But this car is not like any other car. This car has diamonds in its headlights, gold thread stitched into the leather seats, and a price tag of $3.4 million. On the top floor of one of Dubai's more than 400 skyscrapers are the new offices of W Motors, the company founded by Ralph DeBoss to create the Lycan Hypersport. It's only days before the launch of the Hollywood movie Fast and Furious 7, and Ralph and his team are preparing for premiere parties around the world. Not even 30 years old, Ralph is looking back at what could very well be the most exciting six years of his life. Every achievement we did at W Motors was a milestone for us, knowing that we started from scratch and started building the brand and building the name and building the car. Six years ago, Ralph graduates as an automotive designer at the reputed Coventry University and convinces his co-graduates to take an adventurous journey with him to create one of the most luxurious cars in the world. In a small office in Beirut, they start designing the Lycan. Four years ago, W Motors strikes a deal with Magna Steyr, one of the most established car manufacturers in the world. In their studio in Torino, Italy, sports car legend Alfredo Stola immediately starts working on the first model of the new supercar. For, for us, it was a surprise. It's a very complicated model because it's very is is making a lot of parts. He have a lot of composi composition, a lot, maybe more than the normal, because uh, you can see the um, the shape of the car, and uh, is 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 not easy. Uh, but I have to say that the the the, the people here work uh, in the, in the proper way, so it's difficult, but at the same time uh, easy. Three years ago, W Motors presents the Lycan at the Qatar Motor Show. For the first time, the public will see what the car looks like. 
It is only a study. It cannot drive and has no engine inside. I'm looking forward to it. Let's get them. <laughs> Ralph is clearly nervous. But the presentation is a success. Most of the experts on the floor of the show make no secret of their opinions. Great idea, they say, but this young team will never make it. We're still very excited, we're still very, very afraid, but we're confident, we're very, very confident, and we're happy to have it here today. Nearly a year and a half ago, W Motors moves from Beirut to Dubai. As we are representing the Arab world by saying we're creating the first Arab car. So we are based in Dubai for many reasons. We could be based in any country in the, in the Middle East, especially because we're coming from Lebanon as well as a Lebanese company originally. Unfortunately, due to the region and due to what's happening around, we cannot be in certain specific spots in the, in the Middle East. Dubai is the best, exposure-wise, luxury-wise, innovation, vision to the future. This is what we want. And we're building a brand. We're building an industry. We're building a long-term vision for the region. So bringing the automotive industry here makes perfect sense for us. So Dubai is where we should be. And Dubai is also the stage for two major milestones in the history of the car. On the Autodrome, the local racetrack, the W Motors is rolling out for the first time. first driven by professional race drivers so the engineers can collect data. Then by the creator himself. Clearly a day of joy. The first run was, was really mind-blowing. Mind it's. Uh, the sound was crazy, the feeling was unbelievable. That's all I can say, unbelievable. And at the Dubai Motor Show, the real car is presented to the public for the first time. But why Dubai? The people around Dubai, they, they, it's a passion that they, the cars is a passion. Supercars is also part of their, their history, let's say, you know, because everyone knows the Arab world and the Middle East and Dubai to have the most extravagant cars and the most beautiful collection of, uh, of cars in the world. Now, even Dubai police has an incredible fleet of supercars. So it makes perfect sense to have the Lycan around these beautiful cars. We had the, the special forces that came uh, to the stand and they requested to have the Lycan, especially in black driving around Shahzad as a promotion, of course, you know, and have the Dubai police uh, signs on it. So it's, it's fantastic. As it happens, the W Motors Lycan draws the attention of somebody about 14,000 kilometers away from Dubai. But Ralph doesn't get that famous phone call from Hollywood. He almost misses his chance. It's incredible because uh, for the first time, I mean, from, from what I know, uh, we got approached by Universal. So we got approached actually by, by them by email, sending various emails to our info accounts, our generic account, asking to get in touch with us uh, for a filming opportunity to having the car in the movie. So we didn't know who they were, we didn't know what movie it was, and we didn't even bother to reply to these emails. And then we got in touch by, we got in, uh, contacted by someone uh, from Abu Dhabi, from a studio here in Abu Dhabi that's working closely with Universal Studios, and that informed us that they are actually doing something in Abu Dhabi and they would love to have the car in a big Hollywood movie. Little did I know it was actually Fast and Furious 7. And 
and they got in touch with us directly, so Universal was on the phone, and then they said, you know what, we want to have the Lycan in the movie, it's going to be one of the major plots in Fast and Furious 7, and we would like to have, to see how we can collaborate. Now at this stage, of course, you know, I was thinking in my mind, as an entrepreneur, how much it will cost us, you know, what's the exposure we're going to get, what's, you know, what are the ups and downs and the pros and cons of having this Lycan in, in Hollywood money-wise. I didn't know that they actually, the next morning, they ordered 18 cars, one eight, to be in the movie. So I said, okay, so you want 18 cars, but who's gonna pay for it? And they said, we will pay for it. Just give us the code and let's move ahead. Unfortunately, they wanted the 18 cars in four weeks, and it was quite impossible. And I think if you've seen, you know, the evolution of W Motors, we were stressed by building the car on time for the motor show, uh, Dubai in 2013 uh, to build another prototype to be there ready. We had many shows coming up and we were really late on everything. And then getting this order in, it was quite impossible. And after negotiating, inviting them to come to Italy, visiting the factory, sitting with them and, and finalizing a deal, we ended up uh, building around 10 cars uh, in total, uh, all delivered within eight weeks to Atlanta. And we doubled the workforce at the factory, we doubled everything there. We were working day and night, Saturdays and Sundays, and we were able to deliver every single one of them on time. So it was absolutely amazing. When they started doing the filming, it was actually incredible seeing the cars getting crashed. Yes. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy to watch, but it was good. So did the producers of Fast and Furious wreck a $3.4 million car? These mock-up cars are actually based on a donor chassis. So basically, it's not a chassis of a Lycan. It's an extended chassis of an existing donor car, which we're not going to mention. It's not a very safe car to drive it every day on the road. But to do these stunts, it does a job. It doesn't reach a certain level, you know, up to two, 300 kilometers per hour. There's a certain limit we can drive it. And the material we use are usually fiberglass. Uh, in our case, we use a lot of carbon fiber as well, because we use the real molds we use in the Lycan to build these mock-up cars. And this was the reason why these took so much time to make, so it wasn't really easy to assemble, and it was really expensive to build as well, as stunt, stunt cars. Because every piece, every part was actually built the same way we build a real like it. Of course, the finishing wasn't there, you know, the interior was not the real leather, it was synthetic leather, you know, all these small things that were hiding up. And the engine had, didn't have 700 horsepower, it had 200 horsepower, so we played on these things. It didn't have the diamonds in the lights, it didn't have the gold threads, the concierge or the luxury watch, but, I mean, it looked like it had all these things inside. Ralph traveled to watch the shooting of the film, when terrible news spread on the set like fire. The whole production was overshadowed by the death of uh, Paul Walker, and we found out the next morning that he couldn't make it back uh, due to this tragic uh, accident that happened in California. The whole mood changed completely, you know, from there. And the movie stopped for six months, and we thought it was the end uh, of the movie, so we thought maybe we had lost this chance to be in this movie, unfortunately. However, they brought it back even bigger than before in tribute to Paul Walker. And I think, you know, it's even, it's even better for all of us to know that we're making one of these incredible movies, one of the best movies coming out this year, I think, to get exposure to everyone, especially to tribute to Paul Walker, to say, you know what, we didn't forget about you, we're doing something even better to remember you for, uh, for the years to come. W Motors has kept one of the cars made for the movie and they don't intend to ever fix the red-painted body. Dents and damage inflicted by Hollywood. Unfortunately, for the last two years, we've been working with Universal, but we couldn't talk about it. It was, it was very private, you know, until they released the movie or the trailer, we couldn't actually mention that we are in the movie. So, as soon as the first trailer came out, we barely saw the lichen, and then a month passed and there was a Super Bowl and they released the biggest trailer, you know, at the Super Bowl and you see the red lichen flying from Etihad Tower landing in the other one. So this created incredible, incredible exposure and visibility to the brand. People knew the car, people were intrigued to know more about it. And for us, it gave us a lot of credibility to show that we created a car. It was launched recently and it's very limited. And today it's actually doing a debut in Hollywood. So it's a very big step. And from the other side in marketing as well, it's the first Arabian car, and it's the first time in history that an Arabian car made it to Hollywood and on the big screen. So it's also a very big pride for all of us in the region to know that 
created a product, we, made, we took it there to Hollywood, and now we're in the biggest blockbuster in the world. So it's actually fantastic to be present there. And then, a few weeks ago, the most important day in the history of the company, W Motors has invited sheikhs from all over Arabia, international motor journalists, and super wealthy people from all around the world, some of whom might just be interested in buying one of only seven Lycans for $3.4 million. And for us, the biggest milestone was definitely Yas Marina. Having the presence of you know, the royal family, the VIPs, and the media there as well, and giving them the car, telling them, guys, all right, this is what we, did, we built, now this is the proof. It was the most incredible feeling in the world, seeing the car doing these things in front of us. And for us, achievement-wise, it was a huge milestone because we showed credibility, we showed to the people that we're not messing around, we're actually building a car that's incredible and it can perform as we said and it's going to deliver even better than we said. Every detail of the event is planned meticulously. But Ralph does not know. Will the car function properly under the stress of laps and laps on the track? If the car doesn't perform to the expectations of the audience, or even fails, it could mean the end of W Motors. For once, we gave our baby to someone else, because it wasn't us doing the test. We just put it there on the track, and we said, you know what, we got a pilot, and we told him, just have fun with it. So for the first time, we didn't have control of anything. It was just some guy sitting in a car, getting VIPs inside, and showing them what we did. So we were sitting on the outside and just looking at this car being, you know, being driven and being, being wild and people taking pictures of it and just seeing the reactions of the people having a car actually not sitting on a stand but actually driving and performing. This was the most emotional, uh, you know, moment for all of us, for me especially, because after years of building the car, we're actually here and we're putting it on a platter and telling them, guys, it's ready. But the car, with its flat six-cylinder twin-turbo mid-rear engine, performs like a supercar should. And the distribution partners, who have just signed to sell the cars, they're confident. The world needs a, needs a change in the automobile industry. And I think this will do it. This is the perfect car to make that change, as it's only seven pieces and uh, it's amazing. It's beautiful, it actually rivals the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis of today. I mean, it's such a, it's actually an aesthetically beautiful car and the performance speaks for itself as well. Wow, it's amazing, right? This is fast, I never tried in my life, right? So this is, this is crazy, yeah, this is crazy car. I love it, whoa. Weeks later, W Motors has sold four of the seven Lycans, each being built to the individual specs of each buyer. Ralph believes he can sell more than seven and is already working on the next million dollar model. We decided to launch a convertible version of the Lycan due to its beauty, to know that not only seven Lycans are on the road, but indirectly they'll have 10, because three will be convertible as well. The motorsport is something very important. I mean, definitely W Motors is a manufacturer of supercars and hypercars. Motorsport is not our, let's say, our main core business, but it's something we need to do to show credibility and to show the innovations that we have in the pipeline as well. We already launched the motorsport division in January 2015 in Birmingham. So it was announced with, in partnership with several, several international companies that want to be involved in this motorsport program. We were looking to develop the first, let's say, zero emission hypercar that can, uh, that can do the GT races, especially the 24 hours of Le Mans in 2017. So the idea is to have two years of development now in accordance with several international companies, as well as some specialized motorsport companies, which we're not gonna mention as well, to develop special materials, cutting edge technologies integrated in the car and have a flybrid technology with a hybrid electric technology combined together with zero emission and have over a thousand horsepower car that can race endurance races for the first time in history coming from the Middle East. So 
it is something that's very important for us to show where we're going and uh, the credibility of this company in the motorsport. The Lycan Hypersport was the first creation by Davi Motors, and it's been, a, it's been a dream to build such a machine. A dream to build such a company as well, and today we are living this dream to take it to the next step, and we're always going to have this emotional attachment with, such, with, the, with this car. The Lycan is, is a beautiful vehicle, it's a beautiful creation, it's a beautiful machine, and what we have is a beautiful love affair, which is never going to change. But it's only the beginning. <laughs> the young man who started out with a dream and made it come true will not stop here. After all, there might be more episodes to making of a supercar.